I want to share with you this morning, I, uh, as I said, I think that um, the service is kind of backwards to me because what the kids sang about the ancient scriptures and how they change us, I mean, that's what I want to share with you today, is about God's word. I'm not a preacher or the son of a preacher. I'm a child of God and love to read his word and to study it and to study books that, uh, that uh, explain different biblical topics. But I believe I was, I was going to, I lead a men's uh, Bible group and I was going to just take one of the studies that we were doing in uh, 2 Corinthians. We got kind of seen to the direct me here to 2 Peter. So if you have your Bible, we'll turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. Um, but, I, but I'd like to just um, pray with you guys before I start. Father, uh, I thank you for this opportunity to share ancient words ancient words that make us strong, ancient words that help us cope, ancient words that change us. And I pray, Father, that you would use the words that I say to help us to be strong and cope and change. Father, I pray for those that are in this congregation that are really suffering and the need for family members and we need you. But we know that if we know Christ, that you, the living God, the creator God, the sovereign God, the God of this life, is for us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, and I'm sure I went about trying to put together this, this uh, teaching in the wrong way. I got 10 pages, and it's about 20 minutes to, to 12, so I'm not quite <laughs> sure how this is going to turn out. But um, I want us to read uh, the first four verses of Second Peter, and then we'll go from there. Simon Peter, a servant, apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desire. Did you notice a word in there that was repeated five or six times? Six times if you're reading the King James, five times as I read, read the NIV. It's a bridge word. Can you find that word? It's the word through. Through. It's a bridge word. It, it bridges two statements. And in this passage, it often answers the question of how. How was something offered to us? How did we receive something? How did we get what we have? And it, that, we've got four verses here. I've got four points. Whether we get to all of them, I don't know. But uh, the, the word through is going to help us go through and have an outline. And it's going to help us to answer the question of how. 
And <clears throat> Second Timothy three sixteen says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means every word. We need to know what these words mean that we read. I learned uh, probably late in life, instead, instead of skipping over words that I didn't understand, I needed to stop and learn what those words meant. And so that's kind of how we'll kind of put some meat on these bones, is looking at what these words mean. Now I don't, I'm not, I don't know Greek, I don't know Hebrew, but I have some study resources. All of us can have study resources. I have Strong's Concordance and Dictionary that is a real help. The Amplified Bible has been a real help in my life. And I have a study Bible. And then we have commentaries that we can get. And I'll give you some quotes from Matthew Henry's commentary so that we can just kind of learn what God is saying here. Because he said this word through five different times. When I believe that when God says a word to us five times, he's trying to get our attention and say, I want you to concentrate on what I am saying here. I'm repeating this word five times. There's an outline here. I want you to understand it. So let's dive into this and see what God is saying here. Let's look, look at verse 1. Second part of it. To those who, through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, have received the faith as precious as ours. We have received something. Have received. We've already done it. What have we received? They think now, when we think of faith, and we think of Hebrews 11, 1, you know, what is our confidence, what is our, our assurance, we're assured of those things that uh, we do not know, and we have a confidence in those things that we have not seen. But this is not what it's talking about here. According to my study Bible, it's saying that we, this is about the act of faith. Well, our accepting Christ as our Savior, our making Him Lord of our life. And so, this is a gift. It's received. This gift is what? It is through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. This gift of faith is a gift from Christ. This gift is Christ. What is, what is righteousness? Sometimes, you know, in my past, I would look over that word and say, what's righteousness? Righteousness, according to Strong's, is the justice of God. The word righteous and just are the same word. And Strong goes on to say that the equity of his character or acts is his righteousness. It is that attribute which leads him always to do right. Okay, so let's put this together to do right. Jesus Christ is God. He is Savior. He always does what is right. But, is there any but there? Our experience, we're going through life. Life is hard. Life is full of change. But God, always does what is right. He is just. He is righteous. And so, this faith that we have received, we received it through 
the God and Savior Jesus Christ who always does what is right. Verse 2. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. We don't His favor, the favor of an all-powerful God, we do not merit it at all. We don't merit anything. There's an acrostic that says grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace. We live by grace. We grow from grace to grace. Peace. Uh, we know, even, I'm thinking of a, a movie, when you are a beauty contestant and you're asked the question, what do you, what do you want? I want peace for the world. <laughs> you remember that? But uh, peace, how is that defined? This is from the Amplified Bible. It is perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. Peace. And when you, and uh, when I read. The word all, again, another word. I remember my pastor used to say, all means all. That's all, all means. So when you say the word all, it means all. So is, is it possible that we can have all spiritual prosperity? All necessary good, perfect well being. We can. God says that we have it. We not only have it, but we have it in abundance. And how do we get it? Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Knowledge here, uh, Strong in his death uh, dictionary says that it means a recognition, an acknowledgement, a full discernment. The Amplified describes it as a full, personal, precise, and correct. Do you have that kind of knowledge? How do we get that knowledge of God? We see, we know of God through his creation. We know of God through his work. We know of God through his son, the living word of God. We know of God because when we have Christ, we are one in him. He is the vine. We are the branches. The Holy Spirit flows through us, giving us strength that we might grow and bear fruit. Do we want grace? Do we want peace? Do we want it in abundance? It's ours in the knowledge. It's ours in the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus, and Jesus our Lord. It's interesting, my brother works for Grace to You Ministries out in California. He sent me a book by John MacArthur called Slave. When we talk about Jesus being our Lord, it means he's our master. Does that mean that we are his servants? Dr. McCarthy says, when you look at that word servant, it means that we are his slave. 
the difference? A servant can choose to serve. A slave obeys. He just trusts the master. You're going to have a, bird, a son. Trust and obey. The only way. The whole duty of man is to fear God and obey him. The third verse. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who has called who called us by his own glory and goodness. First thing, he has called us. He has called us. He's called out. He's named us. And he called us through his glory and goodness. I want you to, to see this. This glory, the word in the Greek is doxa, where we get our, our word doxology. You're acquainted with doxology. We grew up singing a doxology. This word speaks of dignity and honor and praise and in God's case, worship. My study Bible says that glory expresses the excellence of his being, his attributes and essence. The focus of the word glory is on his character. God's character. Goodness. Goodness is the word that in King James is called virtue. The Amplified Bible describes it as excellence, intrinsic and attributed. In the study Bible it says goodness depicts excellence expressed in deeds and virtue. And so here the focus is on his acts. Okay, so God's character. God's acts, his glory and his goodness. Have, what does it say? It has called us. And it has called us and it has also given us, God has given us divine power so that we can have everything we need for life and godliness. Divine power, the dynamite of God, the miracle of God's power. He has given us this power. He says, given us everything we need for the life and God. And I say, life and God, what, what, what is, what's that about? And, and uh, interestingly enough, when you look for definitions about life, life is life. Life is anything that pertains to it. Can you get the sense of that? The God that we have, his character, his holiness, his righteousness, and his acts, his acts of justice, his acts of giving us salvation, has called us. And through his power, he is giving us everything for life and godliness. Godliness. What, is, what does this word godliness mean? It means holiness, devoutness, reverence. Study Bible says that godliness is a genuine reverence toward God that governs one's attitude toward every aspect of our life. Attitude is the mother of our action. He can give us a godly attitude in every aspect of our life. Ancient words that can make us strong, that change us. Verse 4. Verse 4 says that through these ye <clears throat> through these he has given us very great and precious promises 
so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Through these. When I first studied this, uh, and I didn't make a note in my Bible when I studied it, I got stumped there. What does this through these mean? Uh, Matthew Henry in his commentary says, the knowledge of God and faith in him is the channel whereby all spiritual supports and comforts are conveyed to us. And so I think that through these is our knowledge and faith in God. But I think it's this glory and goodness. This is the source. The source of these promises is the God, the character of our God. The actions of our God are the source of these promises. And these promises are great and precious. They're, our promises are great as our God. Our promises are great as His actions. He flung the stars in space. He flung this world. He made everything in it. He made man. What a marvelous creature. These promises are as great as the acts of God. These, these promises are as precious as our God is. That is holy and just, does everything right. And he has given us these great and precious promises. Why? Why? So that through them, you may participate in the divine nature. That doesn't mean that, that we suddenly become divine. It means that we join with the Holy Spirit that indwells us in cooperation. And our actions be, uh, are through his strength. The study Bible says that it does not indicate that Christians become divine in any sense. But only that through, only that we are indwelt by God through the Holy Spirit. This word partakers in the, in the King James means K O I N O N O S, koinos. We know the word koinonia, which means fellowship, communion. It's a sharing together, it's a partnering with, it's an associating with. We are joined together with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, if we surrender to Him, it's Him, His power that lives through us. Not I, but Christ lives in me in the life of my flesh. Mm -hmm. It is that kind of partnership that we can have. And so we have these promises to aid us in that partnership with letting the Holy Spirit flow through us. And also these promises help us to escape the corruption that's in the world caused by, or in the King James, through lust, or caused by evil desires. This word escape means that we can flee from. It doesn't mean it's eradicated. It doesn't mean it's done away with. But we can escape the corruption that's in the world what has corrupted our world, evil desires, or lusts. But isn't it amazing that God has given us these ancient words? They can make us strong. They can allow us to cope. But they're there so that we will change. Don't go away this morning without being changed. Go home, baby. Your mother and soul. I've got practice.
precious promises of God. I've got faith in this precious. I can have grace and peace and abundance because I have a God of this character and a God who acts right all the time. Father, we thank you for your word. Oh, how precious it is. We're just people. But now, because we know Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are saints. We have the Holy Spirit of God within us. And it's our heart cry. Whether we're worshiping on Sunday, listening to Wild Verses on Wednesday, worshiping on Sunday, that we would please our Heavenly Father who has given us this ancient word. We pray in Christ's name.